much like real life in Westeros, they're not very comfortable with a female leader, like a queen, right? Yeah. So that's kind of like establishing that. That's also a famous uh, quote from the show. Uh, I don't know who says it, but somebody says something to the effect they would rather burn down the whole kingdom instead of having a queen I, I think a, it was, or a woman uh, as a king. Yeah, right? I think probably maybe Rhaenys. She even said that, I think, yeah. I think she says something to that. I remember, I remember it's like in, in my head. Yeah. And so this is the whole problem because how, she, how can she justify her claim for the Iron Throne that uh, King... Uh, Viserys. Viserys. Yeah, Viserys. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there are different people who have a claim for that. And then maybe we just say, because I think that was the greatest character of the show, mm. uh, even though I didn't like him. Oh, who? Damon. Oh, Damon. Damon. I, I cannot like him. I like him, but I, I know yeah. I cannot like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's. Um, and oh, there's another theme that I'm not sure whether it's picked up a lot is the theme of Second Sons. Mm hmm. There's a lot of second sons yeah. in the show. And in a world where first sons inherit everything, the attitude of second sons, like Damon, his whole story is basically a second son finding his place in the world. Uh, Otto Hightower, also a second son, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to do best for his, uh, for his, uh, for his family. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, Coralie's Valerian is also a second son, even though he did inherit uh, his family, uh, his, uh, his house. It might be a second son as well. So I just show it. So behind you, yeah. that's Otto oh, Hightower. Yeah, yeah, that's right? Otto Hightower. Uh, nice name. Yeah. Reminds me of Police Academy, by the uh, way. Okay. Which you Otto? never watched. Probably not. Hightower. A Hightower, no. That was the black guy who was really tall. Oh, okay. No, I Police Academy. It. I liked Hightower. I was always a fan of Hightower. And who else did you mention? I've forgotten. Uh, uh, Corlys Valerian. Oh, Corlys Valerian. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think he might also be a second son. Yeah. By the way, this is interesting because uh, they said, so we finished like the summary, right? Yeah. They said like the show had a very diverse cast. Mm, yeah. That's what they mentioned everywhere. How do you, how do you feel about this? Uh, two arguments. One is diversity for the sake of diversity. Mm -hmm. Does it have any benefits? Two, I think it's interesting the way they put it as well. Mm. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, later on we'll get into uh, genetics in, in this world. Genetics in this world is really weird. Why is it weird? Uh, it doesn't necessarily function the same way as genetics in real life works. When um, they, um, we're skipping many episodes, but then her children, uh, Rhaenyra's, Ren mm -hmm. Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra, yeah, Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra's, uh, Rhaenyra, her children, they have brown hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just just on that, not just on that fact, but basically they use that, their appearance, to call them bastards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas in real life, that's not necessarily how it works. Yeah, because there can be a lot of recessive genes. Yeah, right? exactly, yeah. But still, like, I mean, that's that's a big question. It's always the, yeah, the, actually, it's a good point because I also wonder that in the show, if that is enough, because uh, it, it also happens in the Game of Thrones yeah. when Eddard Stark realizes that Joffrey is not um, uh, Robert Baratheon's son, is based on his hair color and eye color. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's reading the book, and then every time uh, a tal I'm sorry, rather a Lannister has married Baratheon, the child has always had dark hair. Mm. But then Joffrey and his siblings have like blonde hair. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That doesn't really work in real life. Doesn't, yeah. Yeah, okay, it's much I'm... more. I'm not an expert on that, but yeah. uh, I, I agree with you. The, the, the question is, is it Diverse. uh, diversity for the sake of diversity, right? Yeah. What uh, do you mean by that, actually? Uh, no, one also one other thing. It's like, uh, without getting very political, right? Yeah. It's like, okay, there is one, uh, I'm not sure whether he's British, probably British, but maybe or African-American. But let's say, uh, uh, is it a, can see a black man? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, which is okay, which is positive. But then you, there's still not many others, right? It's like, it always yeah. feels like a token uh, a, gesture. A token gesture. Yeah. Okay. But there is uh, him, his brother, uh, and I think his children, they're like uh, of, of, of African heritage, mm -hmm. or at least mixed with African heritage, which is interesting. But, but you know, you, you notice in this show, uh, like nobody ever really talks about it, right? Which is good. I mean, they, yeah. 
And they say that uh, the children don't look like their father, but they don't make any comments on like that they should have black skin or something. Yeah, yeah, like. yeah, yeah. And uh, so what, what I noticed or what I appreciated, or did I appreciate it? What I noticed was that they have black characters, but then they treat it as it Nothing. was supposed to be like in the Roman age. Because I thought I heard in the Roman age, they were not really racist toward, uh, towards uh, dark skinned people. That's what I heard. I'm not, I'm not particularly. I, I don't think I, I. So you remember the scene from Sparta, right? When the uh, when the Persians, it's yeah. like the Persian Greek yeah, War, yeah. and then the Persians visit the Spartans, and yeah. it's a black messenger, yeah. right? And it's never really mentioned that he's black, yeah. right? He's he's treated like somebody that you can converse with, yeah, yeah. somebody from. The civilized world without saying there's something outside or barbarian, you know? Yeah, because like he was Persian. He, Persian. Be, yeah, the, the, the. But he's, yeah, he's Persian, but deeply black. You yeah, understand what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So there is no, there's no distinction in that regard. Yeah. And I heard that was the case for the Romans. They didn't make so much the distinction as we nowadays that we say, oh, this is a black person and this is a white person. Yes, and probably. I, I wondered whether this show depicts the attitude towards that from from another time where that or you know Robin Hood right yeah. when he like have you seen the movie with Kevin with Costner Kevin Costner maybe a long time ago he gets the guy with a very famous voice in there what is his name like the black actor with a voice who was also in the Shawshank Redemption um, Morgan Freeman yeah Morgan Freeman well, I I think it was a theme there, but it was not like was not uh, displayed as the racism that we had later in the 18th century. You know. Yeah. So I think that racism or that differentiation between race is relatively more recent, mm -hmm. uh, because I think that's like a a, a slave uh, post colonial racism, um, slavery, that kind of thing is what created the modern attitude towards like skin no no skin color was important let's say towards like dark skin and light skin mm -hmm. right I th i'm pretty sure skin color was always mentioned in, mm -hmm. in human history right yeah uh, but maybe it was not the way we treat it today yeah i mean like uh, so i have uh, a big nose <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, but nobody categor. I mean, maybe here, like I'm living in China, right? Yeah. Maybe I'm a bit categorized with my big nose, yeah. but it's not like the the big nose people and the small nose people. Yeah, it's not that I feel like that I meet somebody with a big nose and I'm like brother. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did you get your big nose? From? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, probably. But I think one thing that is interesting is they don't they don't overpress the point. Yeah, like I, I feel like diversity is fine, but just don't like overpress it. Like, I think so. Yeah. And I know some people called it a woke show, right? Was it? Yeah, I, I read some articles called it a woke show. I mean, it has uh, classical themes of let's say people who are considered to be woke or something. Okay. Uh, for example, the the feminist side of the show, right? E okay. Um, so I'm not a big fan of. Adding feminist or not, not, not adding uh, whatever is popular in current um, the zeitgeist, right? Whatever is popular now, you add it to a TV show. I'm not a big fan of that, but the whole conflict between uh, uh, Rain Rhaenyra becoming queen is a central theme of even the written yeah. text of even when Game of Thrones was written, uh, or rather the the original uh, saga references were made to this war mm -hmm. and her becoming queen because there were like references like of, of um i can't remember who it was but maybe it was um uh, i forget their names now but uh basically the question of why can't women be queen mm -hmm. uh, a queen right there's like as long as it's there in the text i feel like you're not adding you're not it's not a it's not a feminist agenda it's no. a valid question, I think. It's it's not a feminist agenda, and there were queens in history, right? Yeah, exactly. Cleopatra, uh, Elizabeth, Cleopatra, Elizabeth, yeah. even like the first and the second, yeah, right? Yeah, um, yeah, and uh, I don't think I mean she 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 deals with the common feminist problems. That the question is, how can I be accepted in a male society where women basically are reduced 
to bearing babies or like giving babies airs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so maybe that there was that one scene where she's like, uh, "My job is to." Maybe that one is not necessarily from the books mm -hmm. because I, I, there were like Targaryen women were very particular, were, were quite, uh, let's say, not typical women because they were like they always viewed themselves as bloods of the dragon, right? Or mm -hmm. rather, blood of the dragon. So they were like oh, very okay. uh, wild and very out yeah. outspoken women. So I don't think most Targaryens were such uh, gentle women to begin with. Oh, okay. Uh, and also, uh, George R. R. Martin did have, um, again, <laughs> not a feminist agenda, not a woke agenda, but uh, he was very much in favor of looking at the question of uh, strong women in a in a world dominated by men. Mm -hmm. He had like a series of uh, uh, novellas that I haven't read uh, called Dangerous Women. So it's like uh, different women in different cities, different time periods, uh, and they are, uh, what they did in society. Mm. Yeah, so I think we can turn off the picture here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, so for me, it's also I want to say about the woke question, right? Yeah. Um, I, I think that just because you institute a woman in a, in a let's say, monarchy or something, doesn't mean that now we have like a feminist world exactly, or something, right? Exactly. So a woman that succeeds in a male surrounding basically has to become male. So in, instead of turning the world more feminist in a sense, it just, in the end, it does not change anything yeah. except that the woman probably goes through a very tough time. Yeah. And that's probably displayed uh, by this young actress, Rhaenyra, who tries to rebel when she is 17, yeah. which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So she says, I want to choose the man by myself. Yeah. But nothing changes, right? She cannot, she cannot change her fate by that. I mean, she's still fighting for the throne. There's some possibility for it. But she realizes that in the end, she has to somehow give in. And she needs strong support from, for example, Damon yeah. to do anything in which that I kind didn't of surrounding. Like it. Which I felt like, no, which is fine because Damon, having Damon on her side will be an asset, right? Because he's a renowned uh, swordsman, he's a, uh, respected, he's also Targaryen, and maybe a he's known as being a little bit wild, uh, but at least maybe feared. Yeah. Right? If, if you don't have any strong allies, it's a bad thing. And he he's a strong ally to have. But sometimes it feels like she's turning to him very hopelessly. Mm -hmm. Which is which is like, are you sure? It's like if you really want to have a feminist, uh, a strong female uh, uh, character, you'd be like, maybe she doesn't turn to her uncle and begs, for, not not begs, but like, where were you when I needed you, kind of thing. But see, I th I think that's a very important point on feminism because what you get very often is something that is called a Mary Sue character. Okay. Um, I'm not entirely sure what it means, but I think a Mary Sue char character can basically do everything without training for it, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. without going through any periods of experience and yeah. who's just strong by herself. Yeah. And um, so I'm, I'm glad that they didn't turn her into a Mary Sue character. Okay, yeah. She actually needs the support of others, which oh. is way more realistic. Yes, true, in that sense. But I feel like, mm, yeah, yeah, I guess so, I guess. Because she will have to build many more allies mm -hmm. by the time the war begins, right? And to contrast her with Alice and Hightower, because they will be the main two people fighting, right? Uh, also, she has a lot of uh, allies around her. So it's like, yeah, in that sense, I guess you are, yeah, I guess you're right. Mm. Maybe. Yeah, I'm not yeah. an expert. No, no, I, I totally agree with that. It's just I, I felt like there were like a couple of scenes in their, in their interaction that I felt like, I, I I just didn't like it that much. It's yeah, I agree. I mean, there was especially the scene in the brothel. Yeah, yeah, it was I, horrible. I I guess maybe that is the thing that just makes that relationship uncomfortable. And you see, the other thing is, so what is he? He's the uncle of her, right? Yeah, his father's uh, her father's brother, younger brother. So I I don't know. See, I don't want to talk about like uh, sexual relationships. I don't want to judge anything. Yeah. And there's always an argument like, oh, that's not natural or something. Yeah. I, I don't want to get involved in such debate. Yeah. 
But at the beginning, they say this is sick. This is sick, 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 right? You cannot like have something with the daughter of your brother, right? Like even even the king is like very watch that as a scandal and so on. Right? I, I think no. I think that's because they're unmarried. Uh, because she's unmarried and he wants her to. Because I think the whole incestuous relationships with Targaryens is a little bit different. If oh. you're living in their world, I don't think it is a moral issue if they were married. So incest is fine. Yeah, because like uh, their grandfather, uh, as in Viserys' grandfather, King Jaehaerys, uh, married his sister. Ah. Uh, Aegon the Conqueror married two of his sisters at the same time. As in he had two sister wives. So um, uh, her children, uh, her... Um, uh, I, I believe her son marries her daughter, as in uh, her, her her son and daughter get married later on. Uh, Alicent's uh, son, Aegon, also wait, marries wait, wait. his sister. Then, uh, yeah, they all marry their sister. So in the beginning, it was like... Um, so in Game of Thrones, it was always the uh, the Lannisters, right? Yeah, but... It, it, uh, so, but for them, it's a problem. Yeah, for the, uh, only for Targaryens, it was an exception. So ah. they... Uh, when the Targaryens first came and they conquered uh, Westeros, uh, they had the sev- uh, the faith of the seven. Uh-huh. They had a big problem with that. And then there were like wars and things like that. And then finally, I think it was Jaehaerys who settled down the wars. They, they were actually fighting against Magor. Magor? But anyway, they had like, they were like, this is an ab- abomination. Oh. Uh, Jaehaerys kind of uh, removed the military wing of the faith. Uh, he did marry his sister, but in secret, uh, before he ascended the throne. And then by the time he ascended the throne, it was not so much of an issue. So it was like, no one that Targaryens do it. In the beginning, it was like, no, 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 you can't do it. As the generations pass on, like, yeah, let Targaryens do tar- what Targaryens do. Okay, very good. So we have discussed uh, the, the major parts of the show. We have discussed the Targaryens and we have discussed the racist and the feminist issue. Yeah. Yeah, I would suggest that we take a break here. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. And, I, you know, I hate saying, like, subscribe. I really hate, like, <laughs> yeah. I, I realize more and more I hate people who all the time tell me that I should subscribe. But you know what's funny? It works. The... Uh, no, but have you realized that it works on you? <laughs> like, let's say... Let's say you're watching a video and like you randomly cross it, not yeah. a channel you follow. And it's like when they say subscribe, you're like, am I subscribed? No, then I subscribe. More than subscribe, for me, it's like. Uh, whenever they say to like, that's when I remember to like it. Subscribe, I kind of have to be invested. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I like, yeah. But the point is what I find really annoying is that even at the beginning, and then a lot of people say before, hey, this is the topic, blah, blah, blah. But before we start... Here's the statistics of how many of uh, you yeah. watch it but have not yet subscribed. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't want to hear that. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, uh, it's, yeah. uh, live long and prosper. <laughs>